Hi everyone, in this video today I'm going to be showing you how to make a really simple program in Python. It's going to be a server and client Python files that can be used to simulate doing ARP requests, pinging uh, specific IP addresses or MAC addresses and having whatever you ping be built into an ARP table. This is just a simple way to simulate this so that you can test out how it works and understand how it works. Um, it doesn't actually ping any actual addresses, we'll be putting those addresses in. So let's get started. In Python, you want to create two files, an, a server pi and a client pi. So if you right click up here and go to Python, you can type server. And we want to repeat this process and create client. Now in Python, you can do split view if you're in PyCharm. I like to have this view, so now we can get started. All right, so to create a client server in Python, as normal, you need to have your import sockets. So we're going to be importing socket on both sides. So I'm just going to copy and paste this across. And now to work in the server side, we need to have a dictionary for the networks. So we're going to do network dictionary. Um, and I've pre-made one. You can write one out yourself or you can use the one that I'm going to be putting in the description in this video and it will also be on my GitHub. So we've got that in there. I have 10 IP addresses and I have 10 physical addresses for those IP addresses. So now we need to set up our connections. So on our server side, we want to do server IP equals 127.0.0.1 and then we want to do uh, server port equals six five four three two. So we want to replicate the same thing over here on client. So we can just copy this across. But below this, we want to put in our ARP table equals just oops two brackets. So let's work on. Uh, Continuing on the server side. So from here, we want to create our little structure to um, have the devices listen and keep the server running so that it can allow the client to connect, collect the addresses. And I'd also like it to output on the server side what has been um, requested because that way you can see on both sides what is going on. So for this, we need to create our socket connection. So with socket, oops, with socket dot socket, socket dot af inet dash socket dot sock stream as s. Then we want to do s dot bind. We want to have server, oops server IP and the server port. So it's now binded to that socket. And then we want to have s.listen so that we are listening in for results. So we want to have this printed to the server too to say that the server is listening. So we're just going to put in a little print here to say ARP server is listening. So now we know that the server is listening. Um, and it's all set up and ready to start connecting and collecting information. So from here, we want to create a loop to keep the server running. So we want to keep the server running. And we're going to do a while true loop for this. And in this, we want to do con ADR equals s dot accept. And essentially that it has the connection, the connection address, we want to accept it. And then with con print uh, connected by oops, ADDR. So now we've got the connection getting set up to the address and we want to have another loop. So while true, IP equals con dot receive 1024 dot, oops, dot decode UTF-8. So this is now going to connect up to what we will be establishing in our client side to connect up over 
1024 and it will be decoded. So from here, we want to do a little bit more. So if not IP break. So that means if the IP address wasn't correct, it will break and it will go down to a not found message, right? So now from here, we want to do Mac equals network dot get IP slash none followed by response Mac if Mac else not found. So that way if it's something different, it will tell us not found, move on. Um, and then if it was actually correct, it will print out our response. So for this, we want to do an F string and inside our F string, we want to start off with putting in our text for what we want to display. So received ARP request for IP. Then we want to put in some curly brackets and we want to have our IP address displayed here that we're being, that we requested. Um, and then we want to go responded with, and in here we want to have our response. And we are finished there. And then we want to do a send all so that it will send everything it requested back. And we want to have it done in UTF-8. And we are now done setting up our server side. I just wanted to add, this could be done with a lot of functions as well. You could have this be a much longer code if you wanted to divide this up all into different parts. This is just a way to create it in a condensed form to save the amount of lines that you will have in your code. Um, it's just a bit of a simple way. Uh, so let's get started on the client side. So in the client side, what we want to do is we want to print the initial table. So I think this is a good idea to have just so that you can actually see that the um, initial table is actually empty because this is what the whole thing is. We want to be able to have our table come up and as we ping the IP addresses, we want the table to be populated. So if we display it first, then we display the empty one and you can see that we're starting off fresh each time. So from here, we want to do a while true loop and we want to have IP equals input. So in here, we want to do enter IP to ARP4. So that was going to collect the IP address that they want to ping and use to fill in their ARP table. So here we want to do our socket connection again. So with socket dot socket socket <laughs> AFI net socket dot sock stream as S and you want to do the same thing again S connect server IP server port and then you want to do a send all and in here you want to have IP dot encode and you want to encode it with UTF-8. From here, we now want to be able to collect the MAC address and check that too in here. So we're going to do another line and in here we're going to do MAC equals s.receive1024, which is the same one over here in our server. 1024.decode and utf8. Then MAC equals none if MAC equals um, not found else Mac and this is where we're then going to go into checking and adding to the table so we've set up this socket here so from here we want to go down and we want to come back over to in line with the if and here we're going to do if Mac ARP table IP equals Mac then we want to print an F string and we want to do received um, ARP reply 
we want to put in the IP is at Mac. So that's going to put it into the table that the IP address and its Mac address. Then we want to have an if else, we want to have an else so that if it wasn't actually there, we can print out no reply instead of the program crashing. So here we're going to be doing a, another F string and in this, in this F string, we want to say no ARP reply for IP. So we've now set this up and finally we want to print the current ARP table. So we're going to do print current ARP table. Oops. And then we want to do ARP table. So this is our client side setup and it's a very simplified version. You could extend this a lot further. I'm just showing you a really simple way that you can set this up and test it. So now with both sides set up, we are going to run both of these and see how it works. So from here, we want to open up the, so you want to run the server side first. You want to come up here to current file. Um, you can have it set. I prefer to just do current file. When you create a new program, it would start on main. So set it to current file, click into server and run. So our server is now running and it says ARP server is listening. So let's come over to our client side and we're going to run this. And to make it a bit better, we're going to do split view for both of these. So in our client side, you can see that it's printed the initial ARP table, which is empty. So that helps you know that the table does start off empty by having that in there first. You don't have to, I just think it's a better way to do it because then you know for sure that the ARP table starts out empty. So now we're going to test and see what happens when we start filling out this table. So I'm going to be using the network dictionary that I have. If you've created a different one, use that to test. So let's start out. We're going to do 192.168.1.1 and see. So when we've run this, we have on our server side received ARP request for this IP address responded with the MAC address. So over here, uh, received reply from this IP and it is at this MAC address and our current table has now been updated. So it works. So let's see what happens though when we enter in a completely wrong address. So we're going to do 192.168.0. So it has tried to connect up and see if it can find it, uh, but it hasn't been able to find that IP address. So it's responded with no reply. That's a really good thing you want to make sure is in your programs. Otherwise it's just going to crash and you're going to have to restart if you accidentally enter in the wrong IP address. So let's try uh, 192.168.1.2. And we've now added in a, another IP address to our ARP table. So let's try uh, 192.168.1.3. And we've now added three. So that's how you can set up a little program to test simulating running to ping, collect IP, ARP, build an ARP table. <laughs> that's what I was trying to say. Um, and you can use Python for this. That way you don't have to try figuring out what addresses are in your local network. You can also um, test in a network on Cisco Packet Tracer. So this is just a different way that you can see how you can build your own ARP tables. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. The code for this will be on GitHub. So you can go have a look if you wanted to test out yourself without writing it out, um, or if you wanted to learn how to extend from it, you can always fork that and go from there. But anyhow, I hope this tutorial helped.